Legends, welcome back. First, I want to apologize because for a moment there, it slipped into my mind and I thought that I'm not sure if my legends are ready. Then I had a awakening and I'm like, wait a minute, we're talking about the L7 legends. They're ready for this. This is a different mission for you guys in our MP series. Let's get to it. The mission, should you accept it, is fire. What is fire? Fire is financial intelligence and retire early. It's a movement. Essentially, it's for anybody that wants to retire early and not wait till 65. And like I said, I retired at 44. My wife at that point was 37. And we've been retired ever since because we plan for it. I mean, strategically. And that's the same thing you guys have the opportunity to do. So I wanted to present it to you in action, in living color, so you guys can make this decision. Because like I say, it's always about options. And I want to make sure that you have this option in your arsenal. Let's go. So first, we're going to start with a sample budget. This is your retirement budget, not what you're currently at now, but when you say, okay, in three years, I want to be fired. So this is your budget. So of course, I took everything I could just think of you can change up. Of course, it's going to be the numbers that you're going to actually be using. So my total came out to $5,975 a month. Now I know mines are high. Of course, I want to go ahead, like $1,000 a month to travel. If you only travel twice a year, that's two, five, that, excuse me, two $6,000 trips you can take. Or you can travel once a month. You can take a cruise every single month with that amount of money. So it's really what you're going to do. Food, $500 a month. At that point when you're fired, you have to take into account, okay, do you have kids? Are the kids still at home? So there's all kinds of things like that. But anyhow, we're going with the sample budget of $5,975 a month. Now you have to decide, excuse me, to figure out what your fire number. What is your fire number? This is the number or amount of money you will need to have to retire early. Whether you calculate it monthly or yearly, this is where you're going to start. This is the amount of money generated from your assets, which will be used to cover all of your living expenses. So to figure it out, you're going to take your annual expenses, multiply that by 25, and that's going to equal your fire number. So we're going to take the $5,975 times 12, which is our $71,000 a year, times 25 is $1.792 million. Now, like I said, for your financial excuse me, for your fire number, you can do a range. You can say, okay, well, my minimum is going to be 5,000. My maximum is going to be 10,000. And then you shoot for that number in between. Now, we're not over here where I mentioned your assets. This is where you need to be on top of the game. You need to be mission focused. You don't, you can't, you can't, be investing your money in non income producing entities or assets like raw land, not going to work. So these are the asset classes, the paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, retirement accounts, Forex trading. If you trade in options and puts and all that and calls, whatever your forte is, commodities, metals, Gold and silver, copper, play, um, palladium, whatever, whatever. Businesses, a personal business, a franchise business that you don't have to physically be in. Cryptocurrencies, of course. Staking, farm, pools, different protocols, and of course, real estate. One is, oh, you know what I'm missing is royalties. Royalty is asset class. Good example, if you wrote a book. Especially now these days, and you order ebook and you put it online, that income that you're getting each month after you write it the first time is 
consider royalty income. Make note of that. I'm not starting over because this is enough as it is. Now, so depending on where you invest, it will require a different amount of capital and time. Example, if you buy a rental house, it's going to take 20,000, excuse me, 20% of $100,000, say it's $100,000 for that purchase of that property. You need to have 20% down. That's $20,000. Boom. Compare that to some stocks, Tesla stock. You're going to start with $2,000 or whatever amount you want to start with. So depending on which one of these classes you want to start with, it's going to depend on the amount of capital and time that's going to, isn't this going to be different? So, i.e., like I said, if you want to buy stock with Amazon, Tesla, Microsoft, they're going to all require a sizable amount to start with. So you have to have that number together. And then also, especially if you guys are going to invest in stocks, will the stocks you choose pay dividends? Or will you have to share, sell your shares in order to pay your bills? My philosophy that I give to my kids is I'm not going to own, well, I'm not going to say I'm not going to own because my kids' portfolios are 80-20. 80% 80 of dividend stocks, the other 20 are just regular stocks. My philosophy is, is if you don't going to pay me to own your stock, then I don't want to own your stock. What good is having, say you earned, you, well, excuse me, say you owned a share of Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, that's Warren Buffett's company. I'm not sure what the price is, but what I'm saying is I'm going to look it up while I'm talking to you. Um, anyhow, say you, say it's $220,000 and you own one share. Oh, it goes up to a million dollars a share. In order to get your money back or to, to take some of that profit out, you have to sell your shares. Now, if you had, if your company only allows you to sell full shares and not partial shares, that means you got to sell your entire one share of um, Berkshire Hathaway. That's not how you're going to, you want to invest. Folks, remember it's about flexibility. So you need to look at the different companies out there, whether it's TD Ameritrade, E-Trade or, or whatever, and see if those companies will allow you to sell partial shares. But that's only if you get into companies like that. That's why I say you might want to focus on dividends. You're going to see what I'm talking about in a minute. Anyhow, let's continue. So these are the, when it comes to your strategy, these are the Q and A's that you need to answer. What is my time frame? Okay. I got to, I want to work at least 10 more years or I, or I have to work 10 more years in order to get all my bills paid off or whatever, whatever. How long until you're done? Two years, five years or whatever. That's an important number. And also allow for economic downturns. Like we just had the one in 2008, 2009 through 11. Then we had the recession back. It's been in with COVID in 2019. Now we're already into another recession now. And this could last two to five years. So you have to allow for the expansion and the contraction of your numbers. So plan accordingly. What about your kids? Do you plan to have kids? Will the kids be out of the house when you fire? Those play big factors because having two kids in the house when you fire compared to just you and your spouse, that's two other mouths to feed. So you have to change the budget for that. And, and accordingly, do you have weddings to pay for for your daughters? Are the kids going to go to college? All those things need to be accounted for when you're getting your, your numbers together. Where do you want to fire? Are you going to stay in the U.S.? Are you going to the Philippines? Are you going to go to Portugal? Are you going to go to Spain? Are you going to go to South America? When we retired in 2011, we moved to Costa Rica because that's where my son was born, my youngest. And we stayed there for three years. So my son, dual citizen. And we I loved Costa Rica. I loved it. And the cost of living there is really cheap. For $1,000 a month, we had a four-bedroom condo with one, two, three full baths and one half bath for $1,000 a month. Of course, we didn't need heat or air conditioning. All we had was fans because of the temperature in the Central Valley. Anyhow, let me continue. So that makes a big difference where you want to fire as well, especially if you're talking about firing in California, New York, or somewhere expensive like that. Mm. Well, will the cost of living be? You can go online and look at that location that you want to fire and get an, at least a close estimate of, of what it's going to cost you each month to survive there. What about medical insurance? If something happens to you, you don't want it to 
wipe you out and you have to go back to work because you didn't plan for it. Always plan accordingly. Will all your debts be paid off? Your cars, your home, or you're going to rent the house out, all your credit cards, everything. Of course, you want everything to be paid off. What's your investment options? These are your investment options. What's your risk level? Now, some of these may be more risky than others, especially crypto. Crypto is probably the most riskiest on the screen besides for the stocks. And you have to account for that because if you're going to be fired and you're stressing, oh, my God, what if the stock market goes down? Oh, what, oh my God, what if the crypto goes down? That's not going to be enjoyable. That's not what you're going to want to have done. All right. So we're going to use for this scenario, or excuse me, for this mission brief, we're going to use Drip ecosystem to do your fire. So we have the seven assets we already know from our MP series, the faucet, the pig pen, the piggy bank, the reservoir, the garden, the pools, and the farms. Then you have all your investment vehicles over here to the, to the right, the dividend paid stocks. Like I say, if you're not going to pay me any dividends, I don't want to own your stock. Pay me. Crypto IRAs, crypto um, DeFi accounts, staking with stable coins, lending, insurance policies, the UIL, IULs, commodities, which are um, gold or the metals, real estate. And of course, do your own research. None of this is financial advice. Okay, so now with the faucet, we're just going to use the faucet for this mission brief. Now, you have to realize that when you're doing the mission brief, that the faucet is not going to run forever while you're fired. It's going to be, matter of fact, let me go ahead. It's only going to last a certain amount of time. So you have to account for that. So what you have to do is get in get your funds and get out so for this scenario i had used I think it was 535 at the time when i did it it was 932 and one yeah that's about right give or take so this is the scenario that i use for our mission brief so like i said accordingly as you can see right here this is only going to last you 383 days you're, once you fire, you're fired. You don't plan to go back to work. You don't want to have to all start all over with the investment program again. That's not the goal. So like I said here, you have to account for that. So you have to have your backup plan ready and activated with your monthly goal in mind. Now, when it comes to drip, will you be claiming every day? Then if so, Will you be allocating the funds to the other passive income streams? Will you use one wallet strategy or the multi-wallet strategy? Okay, engage with me for a minute. Like I said, this is the scenario. You just saw me pull it up, but I already had it prepared here in the slides. We just did a measly $5,000 investment. We took $5,000, divided that by $5.35. They gave you nine, should have been 932. I don't know, 934. So anyhow, so I've got 932. So let's look at the numbers here. That you're gonna hydrate for a full year. Like I say, we don't, we're not sure of how long you're gonna do it. That's totally up to you. So we're just gonna go with a year. So you're 365 days. So at the end of 365 days, you're gonna be making $1,273.69. For 383 days. So let's calculate that up real quick. So one, two, seven, three, oops, seven, three point six nine times 383 is $487,000. I didn't want to go with that because I personally don't think Drip is going to be at no $5.35 in July of 2023. Let's move it up. We're going to go to a measly $25. Now let's go with that number there. So let's so now at $25, you're going to be making $5,951.81 for 383 days. 
$2.2 million. Now, that's what you're going to be making. So you can divide that by 12. Well, it's 383 days. So we're just going to do, let's go back and do the 5,951.81 times 12. Oops, not 12, by 30 days. So it's $178,000 a month. So how you divvy it up is totally up to you. You can take that money every day and split it into the seven different income streams that you want to go into. Like I say, it's all about options. You can do it on a daily basis. You can do it on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. The goal is to take that money, that $178,000 or whatever, that $5,951 and divide it into your seven income streams. Because like I said, that's what the millionaires have at minimum of seven. That's what you want to do. And so, like I said, that's $2.2 million. All right, let's continue. Now, so daily income, 5,951. Monthly income, 178,554. You're gonna pay get paid out for 383 days. Total income, $2.2 million. Now, that $2.2 million is gonna be split into seven different streams of income of each. $325,649 are going to go into the seven different policies. So we can see here the 325,649.03 times seven. Bam. That's it. So each of your income streams that you and your partner or you decide will get $325,000 into that income stream. Yeah. And you can have, excuse me, now, like I said, you can use a minimum as well. You can say, okay, well, whatever investment I choose, it minimum has to be $200. And the max, well, you really, I guess you don't really have a max on it, but just use the max, say $1,000. Those are the, the parameters that you want to fall into when you, when you start the investment. Because now if you have five years, you can start a little bit smaller if you know it's going to grow over time. So that's what I'm saying. You have to, there's a lot of things you have to take into account. Let's move on. Now, you have seven different streams. Like I say, what you invest in, it's going to be totally up to you. Do your own research. This is an individual endeavor. Not my mission. This is your mission. So like I said, so we're just going to, you take seven, pick seven. So commodities, we'll take for an example. You can get a gold and silver IRA based on five years and you're going to receive blank, blank, blank per month. Put that put them numbers down now of course you want to have some physical silver but if you have physical silver it's almost the same as having your keys if you have your physical silver at your safety deposit box it's not going to be earning any income so that doesn't help but it is a great hedge against inflation so there's a lot of things to take into account rental real estate now you can t you have three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars to put into rental real estate you can split it into a bunch of different properties you can get a uh, condo in Tulum, you can get a condo in the Dominican Republic, you can buy a sixplex in Ohio, you, whatever you want to do. That's your rental income. That's another income stream check. A franchise, you can take that $325,000 and buy a franchise that you don't have to be in. Good example, Chick-fil-A is $10,000. However, they require you to be inside of that business. You can't buy the franchise and just go take off. It doesn't work like that compared to all the other kind of franchises. Like if you own McDonald's, you don't have to physically be in, the, in there flipping fries and at the window or taking orders. So those kind of things like that. So you can do a franchise business where you can just have something like a mom and pop. You can open up a smoothie store and just offer smoothies, depending on the location where you fire. If you fire in a location that's really nice and warm, a, friend, uh, uh, a smoothie location or icy location or ice cream parlor, or whatever you want, you can do that as well. And just hire the people and you don't have to be there. You can just come in once a week or when it's time to sign a check or whatever. The crypto the DeFi protocols, of course, you can take some of that money and put it into another drip account or the animal farm or the pools, or the garden, or the reservoir. So it's many different options. Then you had the other crypto DeFi protocols, Anchor Protocol, Mirror Protocol. So of course, do your own research because we know a lot of things change. 
Now, Anchor used to, Anchor's still there, Mirror's still there, but Nexo was really, really good. But what Nexo did, thanks to the SEC, they made it so, I was like, I was going to invest, it was like, I think it was USDC, and it was paying 20% a year interest. Then all of a sudden, the government stepped in like, no, 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 it has to be accredited investors. So if you don't have the million dollars, making a million dollars a year and have 100000 or whatever each month or whatever, you're not an accredited investor. So they pulled it back. So now you have to be an accredited investor. Now, once you're making this money, you can become accredited investor and invest in Nexo and protocols like that. So if you don't know what I'm talk referring to, go to the series on what's next so you can see what I'm talking about. You can do a crypto IRA. And okay, now we're going to talk about the secret cell, excuse me, the sleeper cell dash 7x information here. You guys know what I'm talking about with the other MP. This is just as good. Dividend paying stocks. Like I said, if you're not going to pay me, what good is the stock? Because then you have to sell your stock in order to get out. And that's the same thing with the drip ecosystem of being able to deposit your pigs into the pig pen and pull BUSD out and don't have to sell your pigs. Same exact thing comes into effect when they talk about stocks. Now, let me show you. Make sure there's nobody looking over your shoulder. This is secret cell, sleeper cell 7X. Whoops. Okay, let's go here. I'm going to use one of my favorites, Realty Income. They invest in uh, real estate. Right now, $71 a share. They're one of the best dividend paying companies out there. You can see right here, the dividend $2.97 a year, which comes out to almost 24 cents a month. So it was what, $2.97 divided by 12, 24 cents a month. Now, when it comes to these companies, you got to do your own research. I really like them because like I said, I had done my own research and this company has been paying them, paying out the dividends for over, you see this? 625 months consecutive without a doubt just like drip paying that one percent a day realty income is just as good but this like i said this is not financial advice at all and like i said and then you can see their dividend payment history all the way back i don't know why that top bar don't want to move okay except there we go and then you can see the dividends and you can go back the 34 plus pages and it shows every single dividend and you can even see where the dividends in, increased. And, and we're, they're talking about we're in a recession. Folks, y'all don't understand. And there's another one. So like I said, you could take some of that 325000 and divide it between a, an array, maybe 10 different income producing, or excuse me, dividend producing stocks. Realty income. And another one I love, Simon Property Group. If you got a mills in your area, Arizona mills, we got Grapevine mills. If you have one of those mills, the big malls, that's probably a, one of the Simon Property Group. Look at their dividend. Look at that dividend. So let's see here. You're talking six dollars and eighty cent divided by twelve. Fifty-six dollars a month. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Fifty-six cents per share per month. Now, some of, the, some of these dividend paying um, companies pay out quarterly, some pay monthly. That's on you. But I'm just saying there's so many different options out here. <sighs> Folks. <laughs> so it just really comes down to where you want to put your funds at. Like I said, you, you have the $325,000 here to split into seven different income streams. Like I said, it can really be whatever you want. You you really want them to be recession proof, meaning like you do you want to really put three hundred and something thousand dollars into an Airbnb or to Toro or something like that that can be severely impacted by another lockdown. That's what I'm saying. People still have to eat. Um, now, if you wanted to get take that three hundred twenty five thousand dollars and buy three eighteen wheelers and put them on the road for trucking company, 
That's what I'm talking about, folks. There's so many options out here. And I'm only going to do but so much of your research for you. But as I'm saying there's so many options. Now, that's it for this. You know how to fire. You need to answer the questions back here, the Q&A, and figure out your fire number, your budget. Where are you going to start? And what are you going to do with the proceeds? Where are you going to take the distribution that you're receiving and split it into the seven different streams of income to produce your needed $6,000 a month for you to survive and thrive? Now, the question is, are you ready for this mission? Are you ready to fire it up? I know you don't want to work forever. I know you don't want to work till 65. There's people out here 65 still working because they have to. And this, again, this is where it comes down to doing what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. And like I said in the beginning, I apologize when I'm thinking that you guys wasn't ready, but I got to, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're talking the legacy legends. They're legendary. That's different. So like I say, the question is, are you ready for the latest mission? And are you ready to fire it up? And you can see my secret agent here on the side. I see you are. I know you guys are ready and can do what you guys want to do. So that's it for this mission, guys, should you choose to accept it. As always, crypto is an individual endeavor. You do what's best for you, your family, and your family's finances. Drip is community-driven, community-focused, and we thrive on the community, and that's what makes us so good, good, excuse me, great, compared to all the other protocols in DeFi or in crypto as a whole. Increase your knowledge reduce your risk. Like I said, guys, excuse me, guys and gals, see, legends, I will continue to produce the MP series. You guys got a few more coming. They're always, like I say, I'm in the lab right now. This is for informational and educational purposes only. Never intended as any type of financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. Even though I went over about the Realty Income Fund and Assignment Property Group stocks, this is not any type of financial advice. So don't get it twisted. Guys, thank you for your time. Thank you for all your comments. So please like, comment, subscribe, share. And again, for all of my legends, you know what you need to do? Engage.